you look around London. Here we go. Hello, John Tommy. You look around London. There we go. See the London Eye? Every city's got a London Eye now. I wonder whether that's symbolic. Big bad Alan Merritt in the house. Big up yourself, Alan Merritt. Yeah, I wonder if that's symbolic, the eye. They stick an eye near the parliamentary buildings. And it's funny enough, we were talking the other day about the owl and their collection of owls are called a Parliament of Owls. So, that, so there you have it, a Parliament of Owls. Yeah. That's not by mistake, is it? All right, so uh, get a few more people get in the house. I've got a new light uh, it has been donated. So I'm now lit, I'm illuminated. Part of the Illuminati. Right, right, okay, right, little updates for ya. Um, I was on uh, some American podcast today with that film director, is it John, John Paul Rice? Um, I didn't realise he's quite well known. In fact, very well known. So it's me, himself and myself um, doing a little podcast and basically corroborating each other, really. Blowing smoke up each other's ass. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, new haircut. Johnny's got a new haircut. And a good chat with a Turkish guy in there who doesn't believe in the COVID thing. He just said it's absolutely ruining business. So um, we're seeing a strong connection now or a strong affiliation between the anti-COVID, anti-lockdown brethren and us anti-child abuse um, mob. And uh, we, we basically, you can't really get a cigarette paper between our, ourselves and our policies. So um, long may that continue because um, it's all, in the end, it's just going to destroy our children. and. Um, you know, when this first started, people were in a panic and we've got to lock ourselves down. You know, and I think people generally believed that come May, it'll be back to normal and we can breathe out. Hello, Portia. Hello, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. And Kirsty, thank you so much. And um, I generally thought, in my opinion, my humble opinion, thank you, Amanda, this is about my haircut, that, that life will go back to normal. You know, everyone's had a couple of months off work. Brilliant. But this is serious now. When we were, we were saying to these people, no, 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 this is just the start of something absolutely awful. And uh, uh, Wedger, tell the whole truth, come on. Can we block him, Tim something or other? I know he's sort of um, got me nerves. Wedger, tell the whole truth, come on. Right, troll alert, get rid of him. Um, you know, so, um, and now things have got really, really bad, aren't they? I mean, they're now uh, stopping us from protesting, you know, and they said that we're, um, we're all going to be near enough back to normal come August, this slow uh, release on us, but they're, they're just tightening up. They're tightening up and our civil rights are just getting screwed. They're going to ban us from protesting. The democracy has gone. It really has gone. It's... Um, it, it, it's just madness, absolute madness, and we need, to, we really, really need to wake up. And I put a post on today, and it, it's basically saying, you know, the more I um, learn, the more I delve into it, the more I interview people, the more I think, my word, how comes we even watch television? Why does anyone even listen to popular music? Why does anyone ever, ever look, look up to any of these actors? I mean, I heard the other day of. Um, of a well-known comedian um, that one thought was brilliant and mega funny, just a wretched paedophile. You know, we've heard it so much about the politicians, but what about these actors and these musicians? They're just absolutely wretched and they've sold their souls and we need to wake up to the reality that is Satanism and always has been now. It's been in plain sight, you know, they've been showing us all the time all the time through their symbolism. I'm sounding like a total conspiracy nut now. 
but I'm not. I'm talking to too many victims and survivors and they're all saying the same thing and it is so, so upsetting. And people, you know, they do moan at me and they say, John, it's so depressing. Well, yeah, of course it's depressing. You know, you're damn right it's depressing. You know, sexually abusing and murdering children should be depressing, you know? Um, and it should be outlawed. And it shouldn't be a thing that we're doing now, yet thousands of years it's continued and continued. Um, you know, under this owl-based rituals, again, the parliament of owls. And it's just in our face, it really is. And um, we need to start consolidating. And I'm calling out to everyone who watches this stuff or who knows me, who supports what we do, you know, when there is a demonstration, you know, I'm, I'm not in any way conspiring to break the law, but I'm saying stand up for your rights because I don't think you're going to get much opportunity um, really after this autumn's been and gone. I don't think there'll be the opportunity. I really don't. And uh, it might be comfortable where you live. It might be nice in your house but it's going to be very, very short-lived, in my opinion, unless we stand up and we do something about this. You know, for those of us who suffered for speaking out, for those of us who suffered, um, you know, for the victims and survivors for speaking out, you know, it, there is no comfort zone because we've all sort of been there, got hurt, been bashed about, and we understand the reality of this. But for those who, who don't, you're, you've got it coming. You've got it coming, honestly. You have. And it's not a threat, it's something that they're gonna do. They care not for humanity. And um, we need to turn it around. So when I do a bit of public talking, I will be calling out to the police officers in a respectful way. They're not my enemy. Some people deem them their enemy, they're not my enemy. The corrupt chief constables who sold our constabulary and our common law away, they are our enemy. Except Mike Veal, who's a brilliant guy, you know? To the politicians who've failed to serve their constituents, they are our enemy. To anyone that has been involved in the occult and continues to do so, you know, they're our enemy. To any of these actors and musicians and actresses you know, that being involved in this satanic abuse and portray themselves as decent, they're our enemy. To the social workers, again, that deliberately bear false witness, you know, and mislead the family court so kids are wrongly taken into care, given to abusive foster parents or basically traded for money, they are our enemy. For the doctors who misdiagnose the signs and symptoms of sexual abuse to protect others they are our enemy it needs to stop it really needs to stop it has to it cannot continue it really can't and to all of us that do speak out you know I do feel in my heart um, that we um, that they're coming for us I do I think we've stood up we spoke out We've done our bit. It's now time for others to at least stand behind us and back us. For all those who attack us for what we do for the trolls, they are our enemy. Oh, on, on the thing of trolls, I've been advised by um, the investigating police force and by my solicitor, as I have got a solicitor, um, and uh, that I'm not to um, react to trolls, okay, because it is being investigated now. So. Um, I will be refraining from the troll stuff and any um, trolling videos and that, they, they are being passed on to the police. <laughs> Someone's done like a six part load of videos on me called the something Weld or Wobbly Wedge or something. Not bothered, I just ain't bothered man. Really ain't bothered. Um, so we're, we're seeing a season of demonstrations coming up. The government are obviously bothered about it because they're implementing emergency measures under the bullshit guise of COVID. Please stop believing that this virus is killing the world. Please stop it, please, because it isn't. Start seeing it for what it is, a mechanism to absolutely screw us down. 
you know. How can anyone believe that the world's going to continue being financed when no one's at work? You know, I know there's some cars back on the road and there's a certain bit of normality, but still it's only a fraction of what it was. You know, I went into a pub in a town called Berkhamsted, and I'm going to say shame on the boat pub in Berkhamsted because they are refusing to sell alcohol to anyone who does not subscribe to the track and trace. And I said, you don't have to. And I was told by a member of bar staff that legally I had to. Well, I didn't. I didn't subscribe to it. But shame on them. It's a Fuller's pub. Fuller's pubs are now telling their customers it's illegal for them to serve them alcohol if the person, the customer, does not subscribe to Track or Trace. And they will not serve anyone who does not have an iPhone. It's just madness. Absolute madness. What is going on? You know, the pub, the, you know, the, the heart of the British establishment, institution, whatever it, way of life, the village pub, it's just gone. Just gone in a heartbeat. It has just, boom, go down your local for a pint. There's some people who don't drink out there, you know. So what, you're in England, that we, there's a lot of us that do. But um, I do. Not in the morning, obviously, you know, but... Um, it's just taking away our hearts, our souls, the, in the nucleus of our community, just being totally eroded, totally and utterly eroded, and it's very, very sad, very sad. So I'm at a point lately where I feel, I don't just feel tired, I feel so despondent, you know, so worn out, and um, there's some lovely following, but there's only few people speaking out, and you know, I speak into victims and survivors all the time and they're speaking out and I've got a lot of respect for them but I don't speak to anyone that was a professional on the whole, one or two, any professional who says I want to speak out. How sad is that? How sad is that? And I've asked a couple of professionals, will, will you talk and all that? Well, no, I don't think it's right, I should. And my respect just goes, boom. How will we ever change anything if people remain silent and in fear? And they are in fear. They're in fear. They're in fear of being counted, standing up and being counted. Yet they expect the victims to do it. They love watching, you know, all the things I get through. Please do another video. Please, please, please. You know, OK, it's good to educate people on the horrors of child abuse. And it is. It's the right thing to do. But it's not an entertainment thing, you know. And then when I ask others, well, why don't you speak out about what you went through or, or what you did, you know, when you was in the police or the social services or the hospital, and they won't do it, they won't do it. So I say, God bless the police whistleblowers, and I mean that, because I know what it takes to stand up and speak out, you know. I can only speak for the police side of it. I've yet to interview a social worker who wants to speak out. There is one, actually. Um, I have spoken to a brave lady from the prison service, you know, um, but where do we go? Where do we go? Um, it's, it's very, very, oh, well, I, I find it quite frightening, you know, and it needs, people need to speak out, but for God's sake, stop listening to what the BBC are putting out. How dare the BBC even be still operating? Why are people not writing to their chief constables? screaming that we should not be complying with these bullshit laws. If everyone did it, they'd have to stop it. They'd have to review it. They'd have to, you know? They would have to do it. If, like in Belgium, you know, with the Marc de True, when, when a million people, well, officially 500,000, but it wasn't, it was a million people. And that little, I am exhausted. I am, I'm so, exa I'm so tired, man. My phone goes all the time, okay, should turn it off and all that. I, I'm constantly, from morning to late, early hours in the morning, doing this, doing this. Not just me, members of the team, you know, we're doing it. We've got a lovely team now. We've got Lou, Jeanette, Jenny, Nikki, Cooper, all of them, you know. That, oh, there's so many, you know, and we are just, every one of us, Every one of us flat out, you know. I get the 
the brunt of the trolling thing because it's it's my name on the above the door you know so so be it but um i am i'm so shattered i am so tired of it not one national media agency has come to me though not one well well actually uh channel five did and they wanted me to give them details of senior officers to speak to and i said well why don't you speak to me there was no glamour in speaking to me so i told them to f off you know but i don't care i don't need for them but again, the media, you know, shame on them, shame on them. You know, at the protest, there's none of them there. Yet they, they turn up for that stinky rebellion lot, the middle class warriors, you know, the ones who eat the apples and pears, <laughs> not a scotch egg in sight, you know. Uh, it's just, um, I don't know, it does, it makes you very despondent, it does, it really makes you despair. But it's when you speak, to the brave survivors and what they come through. And if we all listen to that superb testimony of Irene, Irene who spends all her time now helping with the, um, the roundabout trauma group, you know, a brilliant woman. She's actually taken over a whole community in Nottingham, a real rough part of Nottingham. She's basically the godmother of that community and taking it under her wing, speaking out against violence, domestic violence, abuse, stabbings, street shootings and all that. Real, real solid working class campaigner. A girl from the age of four was taken, sent, she was sent to the shop by a father with a note. And she'd hand a note to this corner shop in Govan, in Glasgow's South East End. And the note said, rape my daughter for a bottle of wine. And this grown man would then rape this undernourished little four year old and send her back home with a bottle of El Dorado cheap pissy sherry so her old man could drink it and then it happened to her sister then it happened to her brother and we look at Govan Hill in, in the east end of Glasgow even now all them years later is still overtly pimping out children and that's Nicola Sturgeon's constituency so if anyone is disgusted at children, maybe in the third world being pimped out. Do you know what? Get an education and get a grip. It's happening all over the UK and it's overtly happening in Allison Street in Govan Hill. So if there are people out there that are appalled at what's going on, write to Nicola Sturgeon about the overt pimping out of children in Allison Street in Govan Hill. So if you care for your community, in the UK, not just in Scotland, if the Glaswegians, you know, you care for your children, then tell the police and go down to Governor Hill and make sure the kids are protected. This isn't a call for vigilantism, it's a call for the protection of children that are being pimped out on the streets, Allison Street, in Govan Hill, in Glasgow, and the police have done F all about it. And Nicola Sturgeon has been told, and she has done nothing. Okay, so people say, what do we do? What do we do? Well, I've just told you of one street, one street, streets in this UK, in working class, poor, impoverished regions of this country, this nation, where there are kids out there. There's one, and it's an eight-year-old boy being advertised with, I'll do anything, an eight-year-old boy. You know, but if you even mutter something homophobic or transgenderic or racist or whatever, not that I, again, am advocating this sort of behaviour because I don't agree with it, but I just want to show the disproportionality of how they will smash you to pieces via the criminal justice system, yet they can overtly pimp out children in Allison Street in Govan Hill, yet nothing and I mean nothing is done. I am not in any way advocating vigilantism. It's been in the newspapers, in the national newspapers about Allison Street. I have spoken to people um, about what's going on in Glasgow. They went, oh yeah, it's Allison Street, isn't it? So it's public knowledge, public domain. So I don't want the police knocking on my door saying, you're advocating it, I'm not doing it. I'm not advocating anything. I'm relaying what's in the media and what's being reported to me and it's factual. Govan Hill, 
it was little um, Irene, that poor little four-year-old girl being raped by a local um, grocer. And it's still going on to this day. And her father was involved with a comedian, with a local councillor, with, um, with the police. And it just carried on. So disturbed were all the siblings that her sister plunged a fork into her father's face to protect her and her other siblings, you know. Her brother went on to dismember a man by beheading him, hiding his head, the head was never found, and cutting off his limbs. And then she talks about all the dysfunctionality that has occurred throughout her life and her children's life because she passed that trauma onto her children. And they in turn passed it on to her grandchildren. So when I said to you before everyone, all about um, the, the, the abuse, and it has been cited by professionals, it goes on for three generations at minimum. There is an example of exactly how. And you think, and I'm in no way denigrating this brave, lovely woman, how much money has been spent on the national health, on police in this family, in legal fees, in medical fees, in sickness, because unfortunately you, you, you'll end up with sickness because of um, low self-esteem and then low self-worth and the failure to sort of look after yourself, but also, you know, solicitor's fees and care home fees and prison fees and everything. How much money has her father cost the taxpayer, yet no one did anything, you know? No one did anything, you know, and it's just wrong. It's just so wrong. And, it, you know, it's absolutely saturated me right to the marrow of my bones all of this you know and I just want someone to take it seriously high up and do something about it but they're not so we are doing something by speaking out but unfortunately so many people are sitting on their asses doing nothing and they pat me on the back so well done carry on John but why aren't you turning up we've got women like Sue Peak, an elderly lady in poor health who gets about in a mobility scooter comes all the way from the south coast to attend the protest and marches down Downing Street so that other children can't be abused like she was when she was a toddler you know and there's grown men just sitting there in the pubs or wherever they do on a Saturday or whatever indoors on a computer I don't know and they don't come where are the tough British guys what are you doing what are you all doing sitting back doing nothing while children are getting hurt. And I call out to all you Brits, you men, you tough guys, whatever you might be, you need to stand up for your children and for the future of your children. Take some responsibility and let's take this back. Let's take our freedom back. That's all we're doing. I'm not advocating violence, hatred, division, nothing like that. The trolls do that. I don't do that. I'm advocating a good life for our children and our grandchildren. That's all I'm advocating. But we're not going to do it by sitting on our asses. We need to be. All right? So, that's little rant over. All right? Little rant over. So, um, tomorrow, um, God willing, will be uh, the two with a brew from the Dirty South. Uh, Nikki Cooper giving her um, point of view and the fruits of her extensive research. Okay, so that will be going hopefully live about 7 o'clock tomorrow from South East London. All right, and that will be the, the last one before Nikki goes solo. Um, as a researcher, podcaster. So um, let's make it a good one for Nikki, please. Let's give her the support she needs. And um, Nikki's turned her back on her former life so she can expose the filth. And um, she's suffering a little bit, you know, because she's sort of had to give up, you know, a source of income in order to do it. But, you know, she's doing such tremendous work and she's so passionate about what she's doing, she really is. She absolutely spent all her time 
researching continuously, researching. How incredible, phenomenal individual. All right, so um, so that's that. So please, victims and survivors, if you want your story told, get in touch with me. I think we're going to have limited time. I think soon um, a lot of us podcasters and that are going to start seeing our channel shut down. I really think that. So if you are a victim and survivor and those victim survivors of SRA especially, I'm offering your platform, but I think it's for a limited time only. I really do. So if you want to tell the world what's gone on and how you've been hurt and stop it happening to others, please get in touch because um, my prediction is, you know, maybe this year, maybe not even that long away before we're deplatformed. You know, we've had a good run of it. A lot of people have had a lot of opportunities to come forward. Some have come forward, but then they've um, they've got scared and withdrawn. I, I get that. I will never, ever force anyone. If someone says no, then no, it is. Uh, but I'm saying to you, I, I would, if you had my advice, my advice would speak out. Speak out. Um, the devil's biggest weapon is your silence. Speak out. Let's tell the world what these dirty bastards have been doing. Okie dokie. All right. Thank you ever so much for all your support. And um, just keep just keep following us, please, please. You know, keep going. Keep going. And uh, please write to Nicola Sturgeon. You know, 400 people have been watching me live. 400. If every one of you, for that, for any given second of this podcast, writes a letter to Nicola Sturgeon telling her to sort out um, Allison Street and Govan Hill and they are not allowing it to continue, right? If everyone did that, she'd get 400 letters on her door. If they, you do that in the next two weeks, two days, sorry, she'll get 400 letters slapped on her doors, not emails, letters, bang on her door, all right? And it's gonna make a, make a huge impact. It really will. Um, come on, say nothing and nothing gets done. You're damn right, big bad Alan Merritt. You're damn right. Um, uh, saying that the Millie badges are going on sale. Please, please, please buy a Millie badge. Um, Alan's got them sorted out. And um, let's, um, let's get them. The money from that will go to the campaign. Um, and uh, I've got nothing else to say. Absolutely nothing else to say. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hopefully, um, we'll see everyone at the next two. Please make it good, good and please, please make it good and. Honestly, we are running out of time. I feel it in my heart. I really do feel it in my heart. We are running out of time. You know, and I call out. If anyone knows a policeman, please send them my work. Please send them my work. I want to get on board with the constables and tell them tell them they, they need to stand up and they need to stand with us. And I want to talk to the soldiers, you know, to the airmen, to the sailors, you know, please stand with us. You know, when, when we walk down there, don't just have poor old Sue and big bad Alan Merritt at the front, you know, where were the bandsmen? Do what they did in the minor strike, you know? Pipers and all that, really make it an event. Just all come together and do it. Please do it. And let's change history and show the government that we're not putting up with this anymore. You know, we're not asking for anything unreasonable. We're not. We're asking that they stop sticking their cocks in children. They're sorry to be rude or whatever, you know, and abusing and hurting children. That's all we're asking. And of course, it links in with the uh, COVID thing and, and all that. All right? And come on boots on the ground please please no violence against the authorities none of that you know we just need to make them listen to us the bikers all of it come on because it's coming to an end coming to an end so quickly I mean it I can I can generally feel it in my heart this is all going to end in tears all right well god bless everyone right let's have a little quick run through London I'll, I'll do my little um goodbye to London before I go let's go <laughs> let's go over to the East End let's go over to the East End now let's just show you the East End 
Right, all the East Enders in the house say I. Right, right, here we go. The streets in Glasgow, Ellis, Allison Street in Govan Hill. It's a cesspit of child prostitution at the moment. It needs to stop. Been on the press. Right, so goodbye from the East End. All right, goodbye from the East End. You know, telecom tower. Down towards, that's Oxford Street down that way. Regent Street, Oxford Street. Moving around, you know, to the South Bank, Paddington. Down there, down the Finchley Road, Regent's Park. Regent's Park Mosque over there. Um, we've got Lord's Cricket Ground, sort of down that way. Made of Ale. It's a lovely place, Made of Ale. The Paddington Recreation Ground. Over that way. Warwick Avenue. You know, beautiful over that way. And then we move round. Um, Westbourne Park, Notting Hill. That film Notting Hill. Over that way. And then we move round to County Kilburn. London used to be the, the big hub of the... Uh, then big li long line of flats were big council estate. It was always on the Sweeney films and things like that, that, that housing estate. Um, so that's um, big Irish community over there. And then we move north towards Queen's Park. And then further over to the west is Harrow, Harrow on the Hill. And the sun's well and truly down. Um, and, you know, and up that way towards Golders Green and the sort of Jewish communities. All right, so that's London. Good night from London. We'll keep going while it lasts. We'll keep going. And uh, please follow us, follow Big Bad Alan Merritt and the gang, and we'll keep pushing forward, all right? Um, but we'll be the light. Oh, yeah, 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 one thing, one thing. Quick one before you all go. Uh, next week I'm with um, former, former arm robber Terry Ellis. Terry's teamed up with us and um, we're going to be doing a big shout out for Pepsi Watson and talking about um, the um, paedophiles. He's going to give um, a really good uh, talk about um, paedophilia um, within the sort of um, prison community and all that and, and the rehab they try to give to sex offenders and also he's going to be talking about Satanists that he met whilst in prison. Um, he's, there was quite a few people in prison when uh, he was on a on a course that were active Satanists, and they, you know, so he's going to be talking about that. Terry Ellis, former arm robber, um, member of some of the really really big firms in in North London, the infamous um, crime families and things like that. Worked with um, so many of them, and he's now a man that does nothing but help um, get kids out of crime, and a good man. And um, I spoke to him the other day. He rang me. And, and he's very highly articulate and intelligent guy and um, I'm looking forward to it. So Terry, Terry Ellis, um, ex-gangster, you know, ex arm robber, he's, um, he's come on board and he's going to give us his opinion and um, he fully, fully backs everything we do and he, he wanted to, to actually shout out his big respect for um, all that we're doing, you know, so God bless. It shows how it's working, what we're doing. Isn't it a shame that we're not having coppers come forward and speak out like we are gangsters? Isn't it a shame? You know, so um, please keep writing to Pepsi. You know, Pepsi's got um, a hearing coming up. Let's give Pepsi all the support we can. Please, please. And can we have a moment of um, prayer and thoughts for beautiful and brave Rachel Lewis. Lewis, um, Rachel came on and gave a heart rendering account of her time when she was um, uh, you know um, basically kept hostage and um, badly abused during her teen, year, teen years so she was um, groomed and then uh, sort of uh, abused under the nose of, of the whole community around her in North London the school the social services everything and she was trafficked out and all sorts of bad things happened to poor Rachel Rachel's ill in hospital um, and she needs as much support so can we um, please shower that poor girl 
in a, in a very, very painful, dark times at the moment um, with as much um, thanks, praise and love as we can. All right, and this is what we do. When times are need, we, we band together and help. So God bless. Look up Rachel Luis. It's um, Portuguese surname, so L-U-I-S. Um, please PM her. Send her loads of love. Um, all right, because she needs it. All right, God bless everyone.